Well, this is the last section of this deck build. So I'm going to answer a few questions. Well, it's still the same day uh, as I uploaded. And w one question is, Handyman, you never, you don't have li your a laser beam? So I do have a laser beam kit, uh, but I don't like it. Um, I got it a long, long time ago. And apparently, um, I don't know, the technology has improved because this thing is not self-leveling. Oh, anyway, I gotta get these on too. Forgot I had the, whoa. <laughs> Forgot I had these. I probably could have used these uh, to see that laser beam. Let's try that. See what it looks like. Oh yeah. Well, of course it's indoors. I can see everything. But yeah, I, I could have used these special glasses, goofy glasses, to see that laser beam in the daylight. I forgot I even had them. So uh, I wonder if the batteries still work on this thing. I don't even know. Don't stare at it, Polly. I can't even see where the heck it's... Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow, that's weird. This one must be really weak. Because without the glasses, I can't see it on the wall. This one spins around. Um, and like I said, it's not self-leveling. you got to use these dials here. And all these levels, these um, bubble levels... And I can never get it uh, good, good enough. So what's going to happen is this thing is not going in this kit. And I will be putting this in this kit now. Because this will thread right on top of any quarter 20, any tripod head. Uh, if you're thinking about getting these, uh, they're going fast from what I hear. I'll put a link to that back in the description uh, if, if you're interested. Another big question was why didn't I put the post bases in the wet concrete? Um, you can do that. I did that on hundreds. That's back when I was doing high volume production type decks on apartment buildings where we would throw a, you know, pull a a quick measurement off the the building and just sink them in and that, we were gonna make it work uh, they, they were they're pretty good but you know you could beat them in or you'd have to cut things you know once you got up there but yes that's what a lot of production deck builders do is they set those post bases right into the wet concrete if you're careful about it you can get them pretty darn close um, the way I did it, um, you can get it exact. Um, now, on a raised deck, it doesn't really matter either way, but I still take a lot of extra time in measuring to make sure those post bases go right where they need to be. And when you put them in with a mechanical and a chemical fastener, um, you get you can move it around a little bit you got a little bit of wiggle room and then you can cinch it down when you just drop those uh the kind of post bases that are supposed to go into concrete when you push them in they're in for good there's no adjusting them later another thing i need to talk about is crowns boards have crowns all boards have crowns even the straight boards when you go to the lumber aisle of wherever you get your lumber and you're trying to pick out ones with the least amount of twist, they're still going to have a crown. This is a little bit exaggerated. And uh, your studs will have crowns. And if you're building a wall, you want to crown your studs all the same way. I always crown my studs into the room that's going to have people the most. Um, it reduces the shimming and shaving that you have to do. Um, once a house is built or a basement is fully framed, you go through with a straight edge and all along the walls and you mark it out where you need to shim with drywall shims and where you need to shave with your planer. Um, so studs, joists, 2x4s, 2x6s, 2x10s, they all have a crown. On a deck you want to crown that up obviously because well, you want it would sag and eventually be straight. 
Uh, there is a new thing. Well, not not really all that new. Uh, they're called finger jointed studs, and they are short sections of two by fours that have fingers milled into them, and they're glued. And that glue joint is stronger than the actual wood itself, and that is to have a more stable framing two by four. Uh, you get less twists and you get less crowns, and it makes for a straighter wall. Something that came up is putting tape, some sort of foam tape on top of the joists before you put your composite deck boards. Uh, this manufacturer does not recommend that. There's nothing in their instructions. They don't make any fiber foam tape. Um, the deck boards that I've gotten in the past at a very specific deck outlet where I have an account and a, and a salesman that's assigned to me um, I go there, I say, I got a deck that's 12 by 16. And he does all the math, he does all the drawings, he does everything, and then gives me everything I need. What is that? Is that a moth? Yeah, he gives me everything I need, and I've never seen him give me any of this foam tape to put on top of uh, joists. Um, not to say that there aren't some composite decking products that it's required that you have some type of foam tape on top of the joists. So th this will be it for the, the deck building. Uh, what is today? Handyman 101. Uh, so look for that. I'm going to talk about how to get jobs, how I got jobs when I started, and what's changed in the last 10 years about this sort of uh, marketing. Uh, so look for that. Goodbye. I'm all set to put the first row in. And this is what a starter strip looks like, or so starter fastener. This is going to screw down on there so that the first row goes up and butts against it like that. These are the fasteners, these little stainless steel square tipped screws. I'm going to be using the old XRP with a lithium ion battery. One thing about stainless is they're not magnetic, so they're not going to stick to your your tip. This thing's going slow. Not real streamlined. To be honest, I'm just trying to stay comfortable so that I don't end up with a backache. So I've been timing myself. That was that. I got it down to four minutes for this last board. From the last screw to last screw. And I didn't have really any hiccups on that one, so we'll see if we can do. Seven boards in, and I'm going to take a measurement from my last board that's secured to the wall, and just oh, very long leg. Just see how, claw, how close uh, I am. Now that brick wall isn't exactly straight, so we're 102 and a half. Uh, 102 and a light three quarters. So I can make that up. I can just, you know, over five or six boards, throw an extra 32nd to a 16th in there, and we'll get all straightened up. But that's not bad. Over 16 feet to be a light quarter inch out.
close are we here? 30, oh wow. Oh wait, we're dead on. 37 5 8. Perfect. Oh. Okay, here's the probably prob probably the last update. Yesterday I got rained out like a super storm blew in out of nowhere, and I got all the way up to to here. So I came back today, and I just put this board in, and I just ripped this board, and now I'm trying to get it in, and then uh, then the deck will be done. A um, few things. I think I've already talked about it, but my double beam up here, uh, it's probably way overkill and very unnecessary. Uh, what I normally do is build a beam and then all the joists rest on top of it. So the deck rests on top of the beam. And the, obviously the reason I didn't do that in this case is, was to keep it as low as possible uh, to the ground. So there are just joist hangers on either side, and I don't know, it, it, it'll be fine. It's not, not definitely not going to hurt anything. I mean, you can see from right there to there is minimal distance. What is that, 70 inches maybe? It's not even six feet. And then from there to there is a little bit more, maybe seven, seven feet. Just a, a slight cantilever over. Um, the beam is glued, nailed, and screwed together. Um, what else? I'm hoping I'm going to put a, a, a little angled connector onto that gutter and then try to get the downspout to go out to the side there. So I'm hoping I may have to trim it up higher to clear that right corner of the deck. But right now, i got to figure out how to get this dang uh, last board in. It's really close. I think it's just getting hung up on a few of these these hidden fasteners here. And uh, it should just drop right in. We'll, we'll see. Let's see. That one's in. That one's in. There. That one's in. This one is in. That one's in. Knees. Still kind of far away. That's slight bow in the wall but it's very minimal I think I mentioned about the fascia boards that they don't make them in this color. So the customer is playing around with different ideas and different colors from either a different brand or a different line that would contrast this color good. 
and eventually I'll put those on. But for right now, this is it. This wall was fairly straight. There's a slight eighth inch dip in in the wall right there. But I, so I ripped this entire board down and I didn't put that on camera. It's kind of in a hurry. Like I said, I got rained out last night. So I had to put it on today's schedule and today's schedule was already full. So I had to kind of speed it up. This is it. Got any questions put them in the comments and uh, if you could share this video with anybody who's thinking of building a small simple deck with composite decking